Welcome back, everybody. How's it feel to be back in the building? Yes, it feels awesome. I was a little worried last night. Actually, I, I love snow. I was just complaining like a week or two ago that I was like, if it needs, if it's got to be winter, if it's got to be cold, then there might as well be some snow to make it pretty out. And, uh, and so I got my wish last night. For the first time, all of our grass was completely covered with snow. And, but I was a little worried that it was going to, you know, mess with the roads and stuff for today. But, you know, God knew what was coming. We're meeting in person again, and so the roads melted. Not the roads, the ice on the roads melted. Because that would be bad if the, if the roads melted. So let me, let me ask you guys a question. Because um, we're, we're wrapping up this series on moods, on emotions, and, uh, and how to deal with the, the emotions that God gave us in a healthy way and not let them be the boss over us. And so let me ask you just a quick question. What would you do if you knew that you could get away with it? If there are no consequences for your actions, if there was nothing, would, would it be, you know, playing video games all night long? You don't have to worry with, like, you know, lack of sleep or anything like that. Spend all your parents' money on your very own sneaker collection, wardrobe, snacks. Spend all my parents' own money, money on snacks. I could do that, okay? Uh, maybe eat dessert for every meal um, or, or take one of everything from your favorite store. Or hack into your teacher's computer, just give yourself all A's. You know, what, what, if you could get away with it, there's no consequences, no regrets, no punishment, what would you do? Turn to the person next to you and tell them right now. You got 10 seconds, go. <laughs> shoes. Let's get some shoes. All right, all right, shout out. What were, what were some of the things you said? You said spend the night with a friend? Is that what you said? Spend the night when everyone's gone. There you go. Okay. Any... What did you say? Oh, you spent all your parents' money on toys. I got you. Take your what up to your room? Your dog. Oh, is that a rule in your house? Gotcha. Yeah, that's, that's pretty fun. Like, if you, could, if you could get away with anything, you know, the, the possibilities are endless. No consequences, no punishment. I'm sure we all have a pretty long list of the things that we would like to do if we knew that we could get away with it, if we weren't going to get in trouble afterwards. Um, but he, here's the thing. Uh, everybody has been guilty of, like, not doing their homework, right? Your parents tell you to do your homework, and then you say, okay, but then you go and, like, do something else, and then they ask you, like, an hour later, are you done with your homework? Maybe you told the truth and were like, no, and then you were in trouble for messing around when you should have been doing your homework. Or you lied and said, yes, I finished my homework, and then suffered the consequences later at school when you got a bad grade, and your parents are like, did you actually finish your homework? Because that's a zero on that assignment, right? And, and so we've all, I, at least I have, any, any, any normal person who is, no, I'm just kidding. If, you're, if you've never done that before, you're, you're better than normal. But most average people have skipped the occasional assignment and suffered the consequences for it. I did multiple times when I was in middle school and even in high school. And, and, and any time I was in school, even in college, sometimes I skipped assignments and then had to make them up later because I just was not managing my time well or whatever the case or I wanted to do something else. We all know what that's like. But the reality is that, that sometimes we just wish we could get away with not having to bear the consequences of our actions. You know, consequences could be good or bad. So oftentimes when we hear the word consequences, we think of punishment or negative outcomes. But consequences just means like if you, if you do something good, the consequence of that is an A. Like if you did, did your homework, you get an A. Or a bad consequence of not doing your homework is you would get an F, right? Like there's, there's consequences for our actions. And, and we've all been there where we maybe have felt the, the way they do in this GIF where we're like, you guys, have you, have you seen this? Like just where, where your parents ask you, that's, that's when that question comes, have you done your homework? And you're like, maybe, right? The, the guilt the guilt sets in, or, or maybe you do something and you, you knew you weren't supposed to, or maybe you got caught in a lie or talking about a friend behind their back. It's one of those movie moments where, like, like you say something bad about a person, and they're like, you're right, they're right behind me, aren't they? And then you, you kind of feel like this on the inside. You're like, oh, darn. Anybody ever seen Balto? It's like the cartoon from the 90s. Like, that was one of my favorite movies as a kid. Anyway, half wolf, half dog, saves children, brings medicine. It's great. You should watch it. What? N no, kind of. I'll let you do the research on that later. Is a dog a wolf? Kind of, but no. A lot of people say yes. I say no. But you can Google it and let, let your research tell you. <laughs> the way. Your teacher, what do you say? They go, yeah, they come from the same. Yeah. 
One's wild and one's tamed, maybe. Okay, so, but, but we all know what it feels like. The reality is guilt is one of those moods or feelings that we experience when we have done something that we know we should not have done. And, and, and it's, sometimes, it's, it's sometimes not a very pleasant feeling to deal with, right? So when, when you know that you're guilty of something or you know you've done something wrong, and you're just like kind of waiting for the consequences, like my mom would always say, wait till your dad gets home. He's going to deal with this. And my heart would sink down to my feet because it was like, I know I'm toast at that point, right? And, and we all experience this because we know it's, it's, we, we've done something we know we should not have. I need a volunteer. Uh, can, can, I saw your hand first. Come on up. So we all experience guilt uh, from one, one, in one form or another. And uh, if you could just come stand right here in the light and put this backpack on for me. Here, I'll, I'll move this out of the way. All of us, we have a, an imaginary backpack on, unless you're Ella and you have a real one on. And we, we, we all kind of tend to do this. We carry around guilt in different ways. Some of us, you can step on forward right here for me. Some of us, we experience something called false guilt. It's when we feel guilty about something that we don't necessarily need to feel guilty about. We just kind of put that in our backpack there. And, and we feel bad. We, we feel guilty. Maybe it's something like, you know, we accidentally hurt a friend's feelings. We, we said something that we thought was funny, but they didn't think it was funny. Or, or, or maybe you just, you thought you studied enough for your test, but when you went in for the test, you got a C and you felt really bad about it. And, and maybe you did the best that you could, but your best just wasn't good enough and you feel bad about it, not living up to either your own expectations or somebody else's expectations. And so you have a sense of false guilt that you just kind of carry around. It kind of weighs on you. But then there's another thing, and that's real guilt, right? If there's such thing as false guilt, then that means there must be something like real guilt. And that's, that's when you not accidentally hurt your friend's feelings, but you intentionally hurt your friend's feelings. You, you hurt your friend's feeling on purpose, or maybe that sibling that's just getting under your skin, and, or whatever it is, you did it with the intent of ill will. You, you did something that you know is not right. Maybe you'll get away with it, maybe you won't. But after a while, that guilt starts to weigh on you. How are you feeling? Fine? Good. And that guilt just starts to, to, to carry its weight, and your shoulders start to get heavy with it for a while. But whether it's false or real, no, I'm just kidding. I was trying to find heavy things for this illustration. Is it working? Good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so some of us, here's the thing. How, is, is it heavy enough yet? Some of us, we try to ignore it, right? Some of us, we just, we just try to ignore it and pretend it's not there. We just walk around with all this guilt and we think, oh, it's, no, there's, no, and people are asking, are you doing okay? And you're like, no, I'm, I'm fine. My, my bag's fine. It's not too heavy, right? It's not heavy at all. And, and, and some of us, we just, we, maybe we know we've done something wrong, but we just kind of put it out of our heads and pretend like it's nothing. But the, the problem with that is when we ignore it, what we're actually doing is giving it room to grow, and that guilt just becomes bigger and bigger, and we're not dealing with it. And so it becomes bigger and bigger growing inside of us. And, and, and sometimes we, we don't think we feel it at all. Maybe it's legitimately we feel nothing. We feel bad about not feeling bad. Anybody ever been there? Like, I feel like I should feel bad about this, but I don't feel bad about this, right? And so we just think we don't feel that even though we know we've done something that's not right, we feel we've done something wrong. We just, we don't feel as bad as, as we think we should. In fact, we kind of justify things, kind of make ourselves look right in our own eyes. And, and, and that, will, that guilt just continues, you know, to build and to grow as we either ignore it or suppress it or think that it doesn't exist. And, you know, at first, it feels bad. But we can kind of live with it. And after a while, like, we kind of, we get used to how heavy that feels. And so we don't even realize we're still carrying that guilt. And, and over time it'll start to feel heavier because it's building and it's growing and it's wearing us down. Uh, sometimes we, we even let guilt turn into anger, right? It, it's when it's, it, it's anger at ourselves, like we think we're not good enough and just mad that I couldn't like get it right. I told myself I wouldn't do that again. And I did it again. Or, it, you know, maybe, maybe it's, it's some, we get mad at other people. It's misdirected anger that is stemming from our own guilt and we get mad at other people. But whatever it is, sometimes, sometimes that guilt just turns into to anger. We get, we get mad and we, that we can't just do what we want and get away with it without consequences. We're mad. It turns into anger. And here's what I want you to, to see about guilt. Just like any emotion, 
the experience of guilt in itself is not bad. It's a sign that something is off. It's a sign that, that we know something is wrong. If, if, it, if we didn't experience guilt, though, we wouldn't be able to recognize when something was off and when we needed to course correct. Thank you for, for being up here. I'll let you go sit down now. Here, everybody give her a hand. That is pretty heavy. I didn't test that out beforehand, but that's pretty heavy. I'm, I'm impressed that you stood there that long. Good job. Here's the reality. Guilt will weigh on us. I bet you feel like 100 pounds lighter now, right? You just feel great. You say yes. This is how the illustration works. You go, yes, I feel so much better, right? I'll find something heavier for second service and find somebody smaller. Somebody who will tell me the truth. No, I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> backpacks at school are heavy. Yes, I remember that. That's true. So you've got your workout. You're, you're like ready. I just got you ready for tomorrow. <laughs> when we experience guilt, it's a sign that something's off. We understand that, that, hey, I'm feeling guilty and there's something that I should do about it. Guilt is not a bad thing. It's a sign. And, and, and the problem is when it becomes an identifying factor for us, when we let it define who we are or control our decisions, when we feel guilt and we decide to, to try to ignore it or cover it up, or it turns into lies to cover up the things that happen, and then that guilt grows and grows and grows, that's when guilt becomes a problem because we, then we ignore the sign that something's off, and then we're just pretending at that point. And so guilt can be a very powerful emotion. And, and maybe you're thinking... Well, of course, we're at church. We're going to talk about guilt because isn't that what church is for? To make me feel guilty about my life and all the sin I've got going on, right? And actually, no, the, the reality and the reason why we're talking about this is because of Jesus, we shouldn't have to feel the guilt weighing on us the same way that we did before. And, and, and to illustrate that, uh, I want to look at one of the earliest apostles, Paul. And, and we talk about him a lot. We read from his letters. Paul was, was known as being what? A great missionary, a great uh, uh, apostle, a great person who just built up disciples, traveled around, started churches, wrote letters to those churches. Great, right? But for those of you who know, what did Paul do before he was this great missionary apostle? He murdered Christians. How's that for guilt on your conscience, right? <laughs> what did you used to do? Oh, well, I, I lied a few times. I'm, sometimes I'm a compulsive liar. Okay. W what about you? Oh, well, I, I, I stole from the store. You know, what about you? I killed people. Like, kind of goes from zero to a hundred really fast. Paul killed people. He killed Christians specifically. You know, the good guys. And, and, and he used the, the law or the Old Testament to do it. He, he twisted God's intentions in order to kill God's people. And he was praised for it by his own religious elite, by his own community. And this is where Paul is coming from. Uh, I think this, this, calls, uh, this calls us to pay attention because not only was that Paul's past, but God uses that past, and he uses it uh, um, to turn him into the person that he becomes. Paul doesn't let that past define him. He doesn't let that, that guilt change and course correct and boss him around. He takes that guilt, and actually when he gives it to Jesus, he's still able to be the person that God had called him to be. And I think that's what makes what he wrote here very, very interesting. This is in Romans chapter 8, starting in verse 1. This is what he says. So now there is no, what's that word? Condemnation. What's that mean? It means you're not condemned. It, it, it means you are forgiven in a sense. There's, there's no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. In other words, there is no guilt too heavy to weigh us down because Jesus set us free. Be because of what God has done, there's no condemnation for us. There's no guilt so powerful that it can actually deter us from God's calling on our lives. God still wants to use us to be the people that he called us to be. And when we feel guilt and we, we let that guilt control us, we don't allow God to do his work in us to take that from us so that he can build us into the person that he's called us to be. How many of you, you've, you've felt stuck before because you feel like you can't move, because you don't have the right to do things, because you feel like maybe your guilt is holding you back? Maybe you're not worthy. You're not, you're not the person that God had created you to be, and that 
weighs on your soul, it weighs on your heart, it makes you feel like you're not capable of living out his mission for your life. He's saying there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Paul finished with saying the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power uh, of sin that leads to death. This, this is huge because oftentimes we allow that power of guilt from our sin kill our spirits. We, we let it kill our drive to do anything good. We let it kill. Uh, we, it's because we've allowed that to become our identity. But it's Jesus who does his work in us through his spirit. And, and the weight of all our sin and all our mistakes and all our guilt is no longer, it doesn't weigh anything. We're not carrying that anymore because Jesus has carried that on our behalf. Jesus gave us the power of his spirit. And because of that, guilt does not have to be the boss of you. It is because of God's spirit at work within you that takes away your guilt and shame. Because of the death of Jesus, because of his resurrection into new life. That same power that rose Jesus from dead is what's living in you. So, he gives us a chance to start over. How many of you, you, you have wished for a clean start? It's, it's still January. It's January 31st. Oftentimes we view January as the time for clean starts, right? Fresh do-overs. Every single day is one of those because of Jesus and because of the Spirit. Because of that, guilt does not have to be the boss of you. So, uh, because we find freedom from guilt when we follow Jesus, here's what I want you to do. One, I want you to stop being so hard on yourself if you are one that feels perpetually guilty all the time. Whether that's from perceived guilt or false guilt or, or, or whatever it is, it, it, maybe it's real guilt of something you have done and you know that it's wrong. Maybe it's that thing that you're trying to shove under the rug and pretend that it, it doesn't happen or pretend that you don't make that mistake or pretend that whatever it is. But I want you to stop being so hard on yourself so that you can actually take the necessary steps forward and allow Jesus to do what he came to do in your life. Number two is you can stop being hard on others. How often do we take our misplaced guilt on others because of what we feel? We take it out on the people around us because we don't feel good enough. We feel like we're less than, so we tear down other people to make ourselves feel a little bit better than them by comparison. You can stop being so hard on others because you don't have anybody to answer to except for God. And, and then hopefully it doesn't stop there. We're going to get to that, though. You can let the guilt remind you, but not define you. Remember, guilt can be a good thing. You can let it remind you like it's supposed to do, but it does not define you. You are not ashamed of who you are because of something that you have done. Because what you do does not define you. Jesus defines you, and you are a child of God, and he's got you. It doesn't mean that we have an excuse to just keep on sinning. It's like, oh, I'm not ashamed, right? Right? But it does mean that you don't have to allow that guilt to boss you around and tear you down, and you don't have to let shame be, the, be your identity. And number four, you can make it right. You, you can, this, this is tough. Maybe that means you need to go and apologize to the person that you have wronged because of your misplaced guilt. Maybe that means you need to confess something that you've done or that you've been a part of that you need to, to Jesus, or James says that you must confess in order to be healed. So sometimes it's just taking that courage to make things right and you confess it not only to God, but to maybe, maybe somebody who, who's a mentor to you or, or, or somebody who can help you make things right, maybe like a small group leader or a parent or a coach or somebody who is a Christ follower in your life. So you need to confess that and not let it define you, but confess it so you can make it right. And, and, and maybe you need to apologize. Maybe, well, I don't know what it is. Maybe you just need to make amends. But those are four things that you can do when, when you feel like guilt is taking over your life. Remember, guilt does not have to be the boss of you. It does not define who you are. It is only meant to be a reminder of whose you are, that Jesus is the one who ultimately takes that away, and he's the one that is responsible for you in the end. If you give your life to him, he can make you into the person he's called you to be, just like Paul, despite anything that you've done, and he can use you for better purposes than what you feel like your guilt is holding you back from. So, as you head to small groups, I want you to think about this question. What's one thing that I usually do when I feel guilty about something? What's one thing that I usually do when I feel guilty about something? I'm going to pray, let you guys spend some time in your small groups, and then we'll be done for the week.